So far away, Nisha. Hello. What's your favourite alien? What's my favourite alien? Yeah. <laughs> alien. What's its, what's its name? Which one? The one that we're talking about. It's just it's just the alien. I thought it had a, another name. A weird, like the xenomorph. I like calling uh, yeah. the alien. It's just an alien. <laughs> I'm just thinking about a Photoshop we did ages ago where we, we turned it into a princess. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> yes, I do. The Alien series has the dubious distinction of being one of several franchises from the 70s and 80s that now has more bad movies than good movies. And that's just kind of sad, that, innit? It's just all those classic horror and action franchises that are just... Every single good one. Alien, Predator, Terminator... The Matrix is a more modern one, I guess. Like, there's more bad, like, sequels to that than good ones. Like, all the horror classics, like Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Awful. When will they ever, ever learn and just let go? Yeah, it just seems to be a pattern. Like, sequels, not great. So why don't people see that and think, right, just stick to just having the one film. Mm -hmm. It's very rare that sequels are good. For example, Shrek 2. <laughs> no, you know what? Not every film could be Shrek 2 niche. That's not fair. And with that in mind, there's a pretty strong case to argue that there hasn't been a good alien movie in 30 years. Wow. And that that's that's rough, isn't it? That's as long as I've been alive. That said, there is at least one amazing alien adaptation put on by literal high school students, so good and true to the source material that the director of the original film paid to see it again. We need to pull back the curtain on this a little bit. We did record this video already and uh, the audio messed up. So I recorded it with Lucas originally. And I want to mention just the one part of that video that just was, like, it's a shame we've lost it. And it's where Lucas was talking about like, yeah, those alien, later alien movies are so bad. Like Prometheus must be like so embarrassing for the original filmmaker to watch. And went, Lucas, Prometheus was directed by Ridley Scott. And he went, no. <laughs> oh no. And that's one thing that I find hilarious about Prometheus that, the Alien series, you had Alien, Aliens, both great movies. Then you had Alien 3, which sucks. Alien Resurrection, which is good as like a schlocky action movie, but it's a bad alien film. And then nothing for a lot of years. And then Ridley Scott's like, I'm going to make Prometheus. I'm going to like, so it's 50-50 at that point. 50% good, 50% bad. I'm going to make Prometheus. I'm going to put my thumb on the scale. So I have more good alien movies than bad ones. Then he made Prometheus. It's like, oh, fuck. Okay, I know. <laughs> I'll, make, I'll make Alien Covenant. That, that'll do it. Like, oh no, that's even worse. No. <laughs> just just stop. The only good thing about Alien Covenant is the poster, and it's simply a picture of the alien, and it just the tagline is just run. That's what you need. Uh, Getting to the adaptation, aptly dubbed Alien the Play, that was put on by a bunch of, as mentioned, high school students under the guidance of, and I'll get his name here, Fecto Cuervo. Ooh. He was an English teacher at the North Bergen High School, and... Uh, he, alongside, and I'll get his name as well, Stephen Defendi, who was the drama teacher, decided that, you know, you know the, the plays that we put on, they're kind of boring. Like, you know, they're all from like a hundred years ago. Like, the kids don't really, like, you know, relate to these. Can, you know, can we do something a bit more modern, a bit more edgy? Let's work together and make a stage adaptation of Night of the Living Dead. And uh, I'd love to be able to show you clips of the stage adaptation of Night of the Living Dead, but non-exist online as far as I'm aware, but I did manage to track down a review. Keep in mind, this is a high school performance, um, which said that all the kids crushed it. And inspired by the success of this adaptation of Night of the Living Dead, Cuervo and Defendi sat down and thought, well, is there another you know, film that we can you know, apply this same treatment to? And they eventually came to the realization that Alien would be perfect for a stage adaptation. And the reasoning being that the film has a, a small cast, um, a very claustrophobic town that takes place in only a handful of environments, and also is fucking rad. I'm hoping they had some epic, like, costume for the alien. Oh, Nisha, you're not ready. And uh, you, <laughs> are you on the original article, yes? I am, yeah. And the joke I make in the original article is that adapting alien would be as easy as flushing 400 pounds of alien out into space. And I just want you to scroll down and just look at the picture of the alien starfishing. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> that's the thing, that, the original <laughs> Alien is fantastic and the effects still hold up yeah. right up until the last <laughs> second where they flush the alien out into space and it just starfishes. <laughs> it's, it's like the alien is so scary and threatening up until that exact moment. <laughs> and 
and there is a shot from the film that is like now infamous amongst fans of Alien. And that was very wisely cut because it makes the alien look hilarious. And it is where the alien crab walks towards somebody. <laughs> With horror films, it's so difficult to make monsters look scary. Because one, it looks like a person in a costume, mm -hmm. or two, the CGI is not usually that great. Something similar happened with the making of Alien 3. And I just want you now, uh, I'm going to try and see if I can get the same thing. Alien 3. Uh, I want you to now Google Alien 3 mm -hmm. dog. And before you hit um, search, I'm going to tell you what this is. So for Alien 3, um, they decided to create a more lithe and agile version of the alien because it had, um, erupted from a dog rather than a human. And it's establishing alien law that um, uh, the alien or the xenomorph takes on the characteristics of whatever host it incubated in, in this case, a dog. And they thought, well, why don't we just get a whippet in an alien costume and have that run around? And they realized very quickly that didn't work because Nisha um, hit search and mm -hmm. go look at the alien. <laughs> I'm already laughing before I've seen it. And let's look at the dog in the costume. What? They were going to try oh and make my that God. the alien. <laughs> Bring it back to Alien the play. Perhaps the biggest hurdle to translating Alien to the stage was not the effects. It was not even like you know the sets or anything like that. It was the legality of doing so because yeah, you can't just use someone's intellectual property and make a movie. Even when high schools put on plays, they generally have to ask for permission. And when Defendi and Cuervo were later asked, so did you ask um, uh, Disney, who owned the rights to the thing at the time, for permission to uh, make this? They were like, uh, well, our focus was, and I quote, um, uh, really just put on a great play for the kids. Let's get them out on stage front. And that's code four. We were hoping that not enough people would see this for Disney to take notice. And for anyone out there wondering, wait, Doing this was technically illegal. Yes, it was because they were using um, someone else's intellectual property. Because they didn't just adapt Alien to the stage; they used a lot of the original music. And Nisha, as someone who works online as a content creator, <laughs> that's a big no-no, right? Yeah, copyright claims. Footage of this play that exists online is constantly at risk of getting taken down due to copyright claims. And as mentioned, um, Defendi and Cuervo just reason that well, not enough people are going to see this for that to really matter. Uh, which wasn't exactly the case because the subsequent adaptation of Alien went viral as all fuck because they went ham. So Nisha, you have the article for you now, right? Yeah? I do, yeah. And you mentioned the alien. Yeah, the costume. I would like you now to scroll down and look at the costume they made. Holy shit. Yeah, how good is that? That is so good. And we'll know that we pitched about it and hopefully we can track down a clip of it because people did go to his performance and film it because it was awesome. One of the things I like about um, their use of the alien is they took advantage of the medium of the play uh, by allowing the alien to skulk around the audience. Do you like the scene where they have like the motion detector looking for the alien? Mm -hmm. During the play, they had the kid playing the alien, Xavier Perez, uh, skulk around the audience in full costume while they played like oh, the noise wow. of the alien over the speakers. And it looks super good. Cool. It was like, oh, that's so cool. And When I was researching and writing about this, I was kind of annoyed that the success of this did not inspire um, more places around the world to do stuff like this, because I would 100% be all in and going to see something like this. There are like full recordings of this performance on YouTube, and they're fantastic, and I invite people to go watch them. Um, uh, if they're able to, because they're, as I mentioned, they're constantly getting taken down or flagged for copyright um, infringement. But I was, while I was watching it, I was thinking like, this would have been an amazing experience. This would have been like, you know, like Rocky Horror Picture Show or something like that, where everyone in the audience has seen the film and the enjoyment you're getting is like knowing what's coming up and seeing how they realize it on screen. Like for example, the alien, thinking like, well, how are these kids? Like these literal children going to like, you know, realize the alien. And then they have the guy come out and it's fucking rad. Or like the scene where he sneaks up on people. They have like just a big cardboard set and the alien sneaks out from behind it and grabs somebody. They put in like so much effort. I wasn't expecting that. Especially that's for like, like high school kids as well. That's what makes it good. And, that's um, insane. Uh, one of the things I like as well, is like the actual casting of 
um, Alien the play mirrored the casting of Alien in real life because the kid who played the alien, Xavier Perez, was the only kid who auditioned. And it's noted that even if he wasn't the only kid who auditioned, he likely would have gotten the part because he was um, quite tall and thin for a high schooler. And that's how the guy who played the original Alien got the part. He was a Nigerian student. He was about six foot ten, I think. Um, Alien was the only film he ever did, and he was cast purely because he was so tall and so thin that when they put the costume on him, he could convincingly play the alien. And just the idea is, and how much fun do you think that was? Like skulking around in that costume, like slapping people with like your big PVC tail? I love stuff like that. Like I used to like dressing up. Um, I remember for like, um, it must have been like a dance party at my uh, junior school. Mm -hmm. My mum made me a cat costume. Like she literally made it from scratch, like out of yeah. all this fabric. And she gave me a tail and it was like the best thing ever. <laughs> I was just like just hitting people, people with it. <laughs> yeah. In regards to the making of Alien the play, it would have likely been just a quirky footnote in the school's uh, history, if not for the fact that clips of their play went viral online, because why wouldn't they look at the effort they put in? And if they not put in as much effort as they had, I don't think they would have gone viral, but it's the fact they just went so hard and they committed so much to realizing everything that's in the original film, because the play is exactly as long as the film is, it's full length. It's oh, not wow. an abridged version, it is the full thing. It's an hour and 40 minutes long. Oh my God. They, they, and they recreate every single scene. Not one-to-one, -one, but they do their best. For example, for the scene where Dallas goes into the, uh, the air ducts and gets attacked by the alien. It's like, how are you going to do air ducts on a school stage? And how are you going to do that in a way where the audience watching can see it? And do you know what they do, Nisha? What? This is amazing. They have a screen come down and they put onto it footage that was pre-recorded of the kid playing Dallas superimpose in front of the Alien Isolation video game. Oh, wow. <laughs> you receive me, Ripley, Parker, Lambert. I'll try you for the if you watch the making of that show, they did fully choreograph that scene. And like, yeah, we fully choreographed it as if it was part of a wider thing that we're not getting to see. It's like, why don't we get to see it? Why don't you just make that and put it on Broadway? People will pay to see it. I'm not I'm not one of those people that goes to plays at all. I'd go and I, would, I would go. <laughs> and it's almost like a midnight screening where you know what's going to happen because this is like a film that's decades old. Like you go in there to have fun. And I'm just now imagining you go with a couple of drinks and like the alien turns up and everyone loses their shit. And like, I think like for Jones, the cat, they've got like a stuffed cat and they're just like throwing it into the audience. It's like, fuck yeah, where's Jones? What do they do for the bit where the alien comes out the chest? Uh, they have them lie on a desk and they have someone's hand come out from underneath. <laughs> and one of the things I want to put a clip in now of is of the trailer they released for the play where they have like, doing like the start of Spider-Man uh, Homecoming where they have like the really shit school production and it's like the tribute to Iron Man. If you watch the trailer for Alien the play, it's literally that where they've got like <laughs> the, with the arms crossed superimposed in the bad costume. It's like, oh, it's so perfect. You might wonder, folks, now, what did the original creator of Alien, Ridley Scott, think of this adaptation? Apparently, he fucking loved it. Of so course. much so, he wrote a letter to the school that included $5,000 to put on an encore performance um, and also giving them permission to adapt Gladiator if they wanted to. And I, and I hope just a few years down the line, we just get footage of like just some high school students wrestling a giant stuffed tiger like dressed as a little crow. <laughs> but we're not done yet though, because speaking of people who were impressed by the performance, uh, none other than Sigourney Weaver <gasps> heard about this performance and not only congratulated the school on their amazing adaptation of Alien, she turned up to that encore performance that Ridley Scott funded and introduced it to the audience at home. And in case you didn't think Sigourney Weaver was adorable enough, she also reached out to James Cameron and the guy who wrote the Alien script to show them uh, the adaptation as well. And they both thought it was great too. Not bad for a high school performance put on for less money than it cost to build the original Alien skull. And we are running a little short on time here, Nish. We talk so much about Alien. <laughs> Oops. So I'd just like to quickly mention that today's video is sponsored by myself, by which I mean I've set up a merch store where you can buy things like the Big Wangers t-shirt. And I, and I love wearing this t-shirt around the office. Is that the, the grey one? The grey one with big wangers on it, yes. This is one that my, my own mother has one of these shirts and she wears it all the time. So if you want to be as cool as my mum, you can check it out. The link's below about one of these. Hell yeah.